My name is Lloyd McNett, and I'm the Sim Center Director at Western Dakota Tech. I'm also a fellow classmate of yours at Boise State University. I'd like to present to you today a scenario that possibly you could use on hyperthermia, commonly known as heat stroke. So during today's presentation, we'll go through a sequence of events to include learner objectives, scenario flow, staging, and lastly, we'll talk about debrief. My hope is that, again, that you could use this at your location as a very introductory type scenario to first year paramedic students. So, without further ado, let's take a look at learner objectives. Oh, and I'll see you in debrief. While I gave an overview of what is covered in this PowerPoint presentation, I'd also like to give you an overview of the actual scenario your participants will be involved in. Basically, this scenario is broken down into the three steps of pre-brief, performance, and debrief. Since Western Dakota Tech is near Sturgis, South Dakota, and the motorcycle rally, this scenario is loosely revolved around a scenario that graduates will likely encounter. To throw in a little bit more fun, I utilize two characters, Clay and Jax, from the hit TV series, Son of Anarchy. The pre-briefing you will give the participants is pictured on the slide you see here. This is a picture of page one of the simulation guide that I reference back to throughout this presentation. So your pre-brief should go something like this. You're arriving on a scene to a 66-year-old male attending the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally who temporarily lost consciousness during vigorous activity on a hot day. Member has been consuming heavy alcohol throughout the week. Chief complaints include disorientation, high body temperature, and headache. Page, patient is agitated that his stepson called 911 as it goes against gang rules. Any questions? Let's begin. So once your pre-briefing is complete, participants will begin the scenario and will need to draw upon previous lectures and readings in order to succeed. You'll then debrief the participant performance as we'll discuss later. To further explain how this scenario unfolds, let's now discuss the learner objectives. As we've studied in our Boise State simulation course, learning objectives are a cornerstone of what we're trying to accomplish as educators. They provide both the participant and the facilitator with a shared mental model of the expected standards of performance. Here's a quick look at the learning objectives for this particular scenario. The first objective is to perform a patient assessment. This objective is typical of most medical simulation scenarios. Learners should have a past experience with patient assessment all the way back to their initial introduction to the patient simulators. During the assessment, the participants are expected to critically think and successfully identify that the patient is displaying signs and symptoms of heat stroke. The third objective involves determining whether or not to transport the patient based upon the initial diagnosis. The MS crew will be expected to go forward with the transport. The fourth objective involves effective communication between the paramedic and intern, EMS team to patient and confederate, and EMS team to the receiving ER. As topics such as effective communication can have a bit of inter-rater variability, I would encourage anyone utilizing this scenario to create a simulation rubric that is validated by your various facilitators. The final objective deals with properly administering interventions. In this particular scenario, cooling measures such as removing articles of clothing and running fans, as well as administering IV bolus is appropriate. This scenario is designed to span anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes in length. In general, the participants will have several tasks to perform within the first five minutes to include assuring the scene is safe, using proper PPE, introducing themselves to the patient, assessing the patient, calming the situation based upon patient and confederate actions, and finally, to make a determination on whether or not to transport. 
Within the 5 to 10 minute mark, the patient should be loaded into the ambulance and cooling measures should be started. An IV bolus should also be started. The need for an IV administration should be communicated to the patient. Also, a reassessment of vitals should occur at least once during this time period. As the scenario runs into its final leg, the patient simulator vitals will begin to reflect the positive interventions. EMS staff should recognize this and then report to the accepting ER. Again, vitals should be monitored and ethical, safe care should be provided. For any additional questions regarding the scenario flow, please consult the simulation scenario guide for this activity. The staging considerations for this scenario are fairly easy, though I encourage you to consider any additional creativity to suspend disbelief and heighten fidelity. If available, you can utilize either an actual ambulance or an indoor ambulance simulator. For this scenario, I will be utilizing a CAE Mediman simulator. Though a wide range of patient simulators could be used to satisfy the learner objectives, I would recommend prepping the simulator by using a hot water bottle to warm the skin prior to the start of the scenario. As the patient was said to be outside drinking and detailing his bike, some simple car care products and possibly an empty whiskey bottle would also be appropriate. Ensure your participants will have the items they require such as various size gloves, a working cot, an IV start kit, an IV bag with fluid, and a vital signs monitor. A word of caution about the IV administration. Make sure you ensure that the simulator has preloaded blood fluid to show flash if possible, and especially ensure your IV overflow bag is hooked up to prevent saturation in the arm assembly. A camera and mic setup should also be tested and ready if available. Wow, that was quite an objective. Thank goodness our paramedic students are on point, huh? We managed to get our patients safely to the ER, and we managed to see the signs and symptoms of hypothermia. But now we're in debrief, where the real learning is about to begin. So let's talk about our debriefing plan and how we can better accommodate facilitated learning and really bring out that reflection on what our students just performed. As indicated by this slide, we want debriefing to go beyond simple questions such as what went right and what went wrong. As Dreifert, Horton Deutsch, and Hanoa, cited in Jeffrey's 2014, explain, reflective learning should draw out the thinking behind the actions. I encourage feedback to occur in a location separate from the simulation scenario and for video feedback to also be available in that debriefing room. As we've learned, there are many different debriefing methods available for facilitators to use. Debriefing for meaningful learning, for example, is a structured six-segment plan which focuses on reflection in action, reflection on action, and reflection beyond action. A particular feature I like here is the participant handout. I feel it helps with immediate recall and also with participant participation. Though this may seem like a long process, it's important to note that, there, that many of the six segments of DML occur concurrently. The flow of a debriefing session will vary somewhat from class to class and facilitator to facilitator. Again, the focus should remain on reflective learning geared toward the expected learner outcomes. As laid out in the simulation guide for this scenario, there are seven recommended phases of debrief. The opening discussions may also bring to light some of the other areas that are listed, and possibly some need for clarification. Clinical reasoning and clinical inquiry are tied to identifying the signs and symptoms of heat stroke. Communication will focus on the EMS team, plus their communication to patient confederate, and the ER. Experiential learning segues from evaluation to intervention. Global worldview 
helps the participants understand the uniqueness of their situation. Professionalism and leadership will help not only the assigned paramedic, but the entire debriefing audience to understand the need for leadership and especially the need for professionalism. The closing area assists with DML's reflection beyond action and helps cement concepts and areas for further study. So there you have it, Boise State. That's my presentation today on heat stroke. And again, if you have any further questions, please feel free to email me and consult your simulation guide. And I look forward to seeing all of you this summer. Thanks.